So soon. Good morning, Abundant Life E family online. How are you guys doing today? You guys doing good? How's the church doing? Doing good? Yes. You know what's amazing sound this morning that I heard? As I was sitting here praying. And, well, I, I couldn't hear that. But I, I did hear the sounds of birds chirping away. Something I haven't heard. You did just last week. We had snow. Just last week we had a snowstorm, and then just this week we got snow melting. Praise God! Get on to this uh, warm weather. Um, so, before we go anywhere, uh, we're going to start off with Psalm sixteen twenty four. And it says, "Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones." Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord. We thank you for this time of worship, this time of fellowship, this time to come together in your house, Lord God. I ask that today as we come into your word, that it is sharper than any two-edged sword, Lord God. Allow it to pierce our hearts, and allow it to come into our brains and our minds, and allow us to retain it and understand it. Allow us to have the ears to hear, and honestly the heart to receive this word, Lord God, that you have put on to us. I ask that we just... Listen to what you have to say today. And allow it to be used into the field where you have called us to be. Because this is not the church. The church is us. And we're out there, Lord God. And allow us to be the church outside these four walls, Lord God. Allow us to be filled today with your Holy Spirit. And I ask that every single word that is from me, you just cast that aside. Allow only your words to be used through these lips today. Allow me to be hidden behind that cross. Have your way today in us, Lord God. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to read that again. <clears throat> Proverbs 16, 24. Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. <clears throat> I'm going to read a, read a couple things here really quickly. And then we're going to get diving in. I'm going to turn this light down just a little bit here so clear. I don't know if it's from my bald head or if it's from the lights. Could be from both. First day of spring. Happy spring, all y'all. Oh, yeah. okay. And uh, we also can put in, before I go anywhere, we can put into, uh, into notice. I don't know if you guys heard the news, but uh, there is a bill that they're going to be probably signing for next year. Um, they're going to be talking about getting rid of the daylight savings times, bring back fall forward, all that stuff, however that goes. Um, <clears throat> but there is a, a bill that the, uh, the House is trying to pass. So November of next year, if it passes, uh, there will no longer be time change differential. Um, that's just a little thing to keep in the back of your mind. Um, time change is vicious. Um, it, it's, it screws with a lot of your mental focus because you try to get onto a schedule and you get off the schedule. But we'll see where that goes. That's for our next year. But for today, <clears throat> a few years ago, almost a decade, now a major Christian periodical um, invited a pastor from Logos, Nigeria, to come to the United States. The reason why they invited him is at the time he had a he had the fastest growing church in the world. He would have Friday night prayer meetings that would draw two hundred fifty thousand people. Imagine that. Imagine having a praise and prayer night like Monday night, tomorrow night, and we'll put that in plug in and having two hundred fifty thousand people come to the church. Not for us. But for the movement of God, yeah. it's not because of oh look at our church. It's more about oh look what God's doing. Yeah. Two hundred fifty thousand people. He was in the middle of building a shed. Called the shed it was actually a sanctuary that would seat over eight hundred thousand people. And he had churches all over Nigeria, so they wanted him to come to the U.S. and do a tour of some major mega churches all throughout the U.S. Have, them, have him speak at a couple of conferences and then do an interview and contrast Christianity in Africa and Christianity in America. 
So when they brought him over, he preached at several of the largest churches. And at the end of the tour, they sat him down with him and had an interview. And they asked him several questions. One of the questions they asked him was this. They said, what surprised you most about what you saw in America, the American church? And they thought he was going to say the buildings, the creativity, the innovation. And his answers was very telling. And it was convicting. He said this, what amazes me most about American churches is how you can do with, without, uh, what you can do without the Holy Spirit. Ouch. Isn't that true nowadays? What the churches can do without the Holy Spirit. He said, I love your buildings. He said, I love your lights. I love your programs, your music, your Christian labels, your education. I love your Christian t-shirts. Your bumper stickers, your breath mints, and your testament. <laughs> I like all those things that you got going on, but I did not sense the anointing like I do in Africa. Ouch. He said in Africa, we, do, we don't have what you have, but we have what you don't. I don't know about you, but that kind of stings. That there is a lot of churches out there that rely on man-made, and I talked earlier before praise and worship, that we have become kingdom-minded, but it's about kingdom grown in your own kingdom, in your own church, and trying to get the most chairs filled up, and quote-unquote ladder climbing. Look how many people I got. I got the biggest church in this little district. I got the biggest church in this area. I got the biggest church, but the question being is when you got that biggest church, how did you get there? And what is your focus on? And uh, this one's going to sting a little bit today, but we're going to be talking about watered down Christianity. And it's funny, I've been holding on to that little saying for a couple weeks now, and then God just dropped it. Matthew 16, 24 through 28. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? And what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is, come, is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and will then repay every man according to his deed. Truly I say to you, there are some of those who are standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. It's a watered down message. <laughs> Gotta keep you on your toes. That's why I called you this morning. I told you I didn't eat breakfast really. I needed something. God told me I need to do this. We have diluted, diluted the message to appease the masses. Back up there, Michael, Proverbs 16, 24. Now, I don't know what this scooping is supposed to be like. One serving, approximately two tablespoons. Can you use a scoop? No, for this guy. Oh. One scoop. Three scoops? Oh, goodness. 
<laughs> Where is the pastor? He's slinging the spirit. Now that just that he's going to get it. Probably should shake this one out. Now, gracious words are honeycomb, sweet to the soul. This should be sweet, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's on the bottom, though. That's pretty good. Stir it up. Get a spoon. Yeah, give me a spoon. Oh, here's one more spoon. That'd be great. This is just, there is a point. There's a point right behind this. Everybody wants it. I think I need a little bit more because it's not really that sweet. So, <laughs> that sounds like fun. It's sweet to the soul. But this is what we get. Oh, yeah. This is what we get when we, uh, really, really good. Anybody want a sip? <laughs> but this is the word. It's sweet. Tastes good, nourishes. Yeah, it's probably not the most healthy as I know. It's iced tea. It's probably not the most healthy. I get that. But <laughs> it's the sugar that kills it. Though. But the point is, the fact is, is that this right here, in your mind, picture it as living water. But as Christianity, what happens is we start taking people's words. And we start listening to other people, and we don't realize what's going on. And next, you know, it starts getting diluted, and starts getting watered down, and it loses its potency, and it loses everything it has. And then next, you know, the word just turns into the world. It has lost its potency. It is no longer a sweet smell. It is no longer a sweet taste. Where it's now just the world, and we have taken the word out of you, and we have turned it in to the word of the Lord, uh, into the world, and we have just sat there and took everything of God and put it away, and decided that this is no longer needed, and we rather sit there and listen and follow false teachings, false preaching, false words, because it tastes better. Because there is no longer conviction. There is no longer anything. I can go to church and I can hear the word and not feel anything, not be moved and not be changed, not be transformed, because I like it. I don't have to worry about what the pastor says. I can go in there and just get a fill and then turn around and be of the world. Ouch. But that's how Christianity is nowadays. We have turned the word of God into the word of man and we follow the false teachings. Now I was on a social media ch channel this pastor and I will use terms very loosely. I'm not going to go out there and say any names because I actually had to sit there and go online and try to figure out who this guy was if he was real because I was I was I was livid I was I was fired up. And you can ask here, it destroyed me. It killed me. I hope not. <sighs> Wait till you hear. Well, he was on there. And cursing up a storm, using all sorts of vulgar words. He was sitting there, sending out false words, false teaching, holding up his Bible, teaching the people, preaching to the people about false doctrine. At the same time, every time that he was going, he was decided that he was going to curse everything. And I'm not talking like little 
No, he was using profanity that was just like should not be on social media at all. I was I was shooken by this situation. Went through some of his other posts just to see if it was just a joke or a game or something like that that he was posting on there. Nope. Every single one was like that. It was disgusting. And there were so many people on there, oh, that's a great pastor, he was a great pastor, he's this, he's that. What is he teaching? What is he teaching to the congregation if that's okay? Because last time I read that you are supposed to be like Christ. I don't think Christ was like that. I don't think Christ would want that. I don't think Christ needs to have that in his church. Speaking to people like that. It killed me. People were saying that's a church that I can go to. Now there's a real preacher. There's one person that says I'm an atheist and I would go to his church. What are you learning, people? Then there was this other pastor who has publicly, publicly confessed that he refuses to preach and teach doctrine. And he refuses to preach scripture. Prosperity teaching. You go to church and you just want to hear the good news. You just want to hear the words that are feeling good. You just you give a little tithe money. You be a good person. You say hello to people. You don't worry. You can go to heaven. Prosperity teaching. Prosperity teaching and preaching. And it kills you to know that he refuses to preach doctrine, to preach scripture. We realize and understand that this book, when a, when a pastor preaches or teaches, that we should be, as stewards, we should be taking the word that I say, or that another pastor says, write them down, go home, study them. Do we understand that? Read what's being said. Read what's being taught to you guys. Do you know why? Because if you don't, if you just take for what somebody says behind the pulpit, do you know if it's watered down? Do we understand that? If you just sit there and say, oh, the pastor preached for an hour and a half and I feel good. What was he preaching? What was he teaching? Because right now, prosperity teaching is this. It's watered down. How are you to grow? How are you to sit there and be mature? How are you to teach somebody else if you have nothing in you? Just water. You need to get a little bit of sustenance back into your system so that way you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you can understand what is right and what is wrong because this prosperity teaching and preaching is not going to get you nowhere and I'm going to say a word that people don't like to say you can go to hell for not being knowing what's going on. Do we understand that? The truth. We need to know the truth and what the truth is. And sometimes it hurts. Sometimes the truth hurts. But it's okay if it hurts. It's okay if it stings. Because that's how you grow. That's how you mature. That's how you understand. Mm. Yeah. 
And honestly, that's how you will stop doing what you are doing. But if you sit there and continue to be filled with this junk, this nonsense, and you get all this sustenance out, all this manna, look at all that good stuff on the bottom. Look at all that good stuff. That, that sweet, sweet taste of sugar. You're going to replace that with the world? Really? You're going to take everything that Jesus has, all this, all this greatness right here, and substitute it for the world? It hurts me to know that there are pastors out there that honestly, and I'm going to say it very bluntly, they don't care about their congregation. They don't care about the people. They don't care about what people live like. They'd rather sit there behind their nice little chair Go on a nice little website and find the best message that can that cannot hurt or offend somebody because they don't want to hurt somebody. They want to be inclusive. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hurt somebody with the word. But can I tell you something? Can I be honest with you? If you are preaching the word of God, if you are sitting there being filled with the Holy Spirit, and if you are being used by God, that word that is going to be preached to the people is not going to hurt them. It's going to help them grow. Because you are taking yourself out of the equation, and you're allowing God to get into that equation. And you're going to allow God to sit there and talk to the people, and you're not going to be the one that's doing it. And there's an old saying that was told to me many years ago, accept no credit, take no blame. Accept no credit. If somebody comes up to a pastor and says, that was a great word, it's, thank you, God, for that word. You really hurt me. Then you need to take it up with God. If you are affected by something, yeah, talk to the pastor about it, but you also got to talk to God first. Because if you don't talk to God first, then there is something deep down inside of you that is watered down, and you're not getting the stuff that's on the very bottom. And this is the stuff that we need to get away from. That is just two examples of everything that's going on in this world. And the world is getting darker. And people are afraid to speak the truth. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, all scripture is breathed out by God. All scripture is breathed by God. And Profitable for teaching, for reproof, wait, wait, ready for this one? For correction. Do we get that? For correction and for training in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. I'm going to put this one on there. You want to throw this one up here? John 3, 16, please. And we all know this one, right? Pages are a little stuck. Imagine this, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only... One and only begotten Son. That didn't change that around a little bit. For God to love some of the people. Or how about this? 
I love this one. Ready for this one? This is the way we do. people think nowadays. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only person. Because we can't call it a son. Because we're going to offend people. So God gave his only person. You're taking things out of Scripture. Because you don't want to offend somebody for saying that Jesus was a man. Really? Alright, that whomever believes in him shall not perish. Well, guess what? We're going to change that word that whoever believes, we'll change that believes that everyone will go to heaven. We're going to take that whole sentence out of there. We're going to say that, that no one shall perish, but everyone will have everlasting life. Because that's the God that we serve. That everything is great. Everything is fine. Everything is perfect. Does that sting a little bit? Because that's the word that's being preached out there in the world. And honestly, if you don't know what this says, if you don't know what this reads, then you are going to fall victim to that junk. You will fall victim to that stuff that they preach and they teach because you are getting filled with the wrong stuff and you're just believing it. That's why you need to go home and study the word. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training. Psalms 119, 103 says, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. How sweet are your words. Let's get into this. Wait for this one. Not a lot of people want to preach on this one. Especially the false prophets. Matthew 7, 15. It says, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but are inwardly they are ferocious wolves. Probably asking yourself, how do you know what a false prophet is? How do you know what a prosperity gospel church is? How do you know if it's filled with the Holy Spirit? How do you know what they believe? first part is, do they preach from this? Second thing is, do they believe in prayer? How about this? Do they believe in laying on hands? Do they believe in speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance? We don't want to talk about that because the Bible doesn't say we do that. Yes, it does. In the book of Acts, it tells you. And you know, honestly, there was a church. I'm not going to go into details. But that church really thought it was a great church. But they did not believe on believe in on laying on hands. Praying in the Spirit. They did not really believe in the gifts of the Spirit because they were more kingdom minded of people and how to grow the church. Again, what are you teaching? What are you preaching? We need to hear the Word of God, all of it, not just the fluffy stuff, not just the feel good stuff. If it continues to make you feel good, then how are you to grow? How are you to know and understand that God that we serve? How do you understand the God that we serve? He is a just God, a merciful God, 
but he is also a jealous God. He wants all of us, not just part of you, not a half-hearted, not lukewarm. I can go to church just on Sunday morning and be fed. But what is your midweek like when that happens? Because you're lukewarm. You're missing out on the daily stuff. Getting the very bottom of that good stuff right there. I just want to say he's jealous for us, mm -hmm. not of us. Yes. The world constantly is saying of because of something Oprah said years ago on her show when she clearly explained how she did not understand the Bible. He wants us, he wants our attention. Right. That's just something that's going around the internet right now. People don't even understand it correctly. That's, that's why I just wanted to say that. No, you're good. You're good. It's actually a really good thing to have a jealous God. Really, it is. It's like one of those things that somebody loves us so much. A, a love that is like so rich and honestly so understanding believe it or not probably more understanding than we could ever be you slip in your salvation he's the one that's willing to forgive But yet us, as human beings, if we do one thing wrong, we like to harbor and hold on to. If I were to sit there and leave the uh, cabinet doors open in my house, my, my wife hits her head on it numerous times, she's going to be 10 to 1 to sit there and harbor a little grudge. <laughs> Even though I said I'm sorry, won't do it again. She's going to sit there and say, well, gee, she said that before. So she's going to harbor onto that. Next, you know, I do it again. She's like, yep, I told you so. <laughs> You're in the I told you so stage. <clears throat> so as human beings, we like to hold on to that and we like to harbor onto that. But God says, you know, yeah, you, you slipped up. I forgive you because I love you. Let's move forward. Matthew 7, 16 through 23. It says, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn, brush, uh, thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Go online. <clears throat> I'm pause right there really quickly. I thought you something. Okay, good. You will go online and you'll start saying and seeing things. And you'll start recognizing. And then makes you know that Holy Spirit will come upon you and say, There's something not right. There's something going on. You may not know exactly what it is at that point. But the Holy Spirit will be talking to you and saying, that's not good. Stay clear of that situation. Like I said, you may not know the reason why. Sometimes it's very clear and point blank. You're going to drive around in their nice little jet. But honestly, deep down inside, 
their congregation is hurting. Because I can honestly tell you, Billy can put on that smile so long before the cracks start showing the real me meaning behind it. Check out the local churches. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> no, that, that stinks. You know, it really does. It, it's like, yeah. Jeez. We need more people in the church. Mm. Mm, what can we do? Let's, uh, let's preach good stuff. I think next week I'm just going to go on to uh, sermoncentral.com. I know what that person is preaching. And if I don't like it, I'm going to find one that feels real good to me. But do you realize and understand that as a pastor, most of the time that what's being preached is also being preached to that person as well? I want to say that again. As a pastor... Sometimes the person that is preaching or teaching, that word is not just for the people, it's for themselves as well. The congregation does not need to hear it as much as a pastor needs to hear it. And I can tell you, honestly speaking, that there has been messages that I had sat there, I was like writing down, and next you know, God changed it up, and that's because that word was for me mm -hmm. at that time. It wasn't for you guys, it was for me. Get all excited! I'm like, I got this word. It's awesome! It's awesome! It hurts! It stings! It's like, wait, that's for me. Ouch! Mm. That's the Holy Spirit, though. Mm. Verse twenty-one says, "Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, mm. but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven." Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did, not, did we not prophesy in your name? Did in your name drive out demons? Did in your name perform many miracles? Then I will plainly tell them, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. How many people out there that are trying to do the will of God? <clears throat> trying to ward out demons, trying to perform miracles. And I have heard it here. And I'm going to use it. on hands being slain in the spirit there are pastors out there that force it what do I mean by force it when they put their hand on the head they force their hand to push them down you will go down praying and then as they're praying they're pushing them and pushing them and the other person is sitting there wanting to get healed but when that pastor is pre praying for them and pushing them like that, you know what happens to that person? They put up a wall. Because they can feel that this is wrong. So many pastors out there that sit there and force that down. And then the next you know, it puts a bad taste on people's mouths. And people start realizing around them that Slain in the spirit is not a real thing. It's a man-made thing. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that the Holy Spirit moved in this spot? I don't even have to lay hands on somebody. I could be laid up here mm -hmm. and I can just point and God will put them down. Yeah. That's when you start realizing and understanding 
there is something wrong. Because it's more about how I can look better for everybody else. Mm -hmm. How it looks great on my report to the district saying, mm -hmm. I did this, I did this, I did this, and I did this. Uh, let's be happy to everybody else there. Jude 17 and thir uh, 23. Call to observe. But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who divide you who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in the most holy of faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourself in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire. To others show mercy mixed with fear. Painting even the clothing stain by the corrupt flesh. Do we understand that this is happening every single day, more and more and more? Titus 2 1 and 2 says, You, however, must teach what is appropriate to sound doctrine. Teach the older men to be temperate, worthy of respect, self-controlled, and sound in faith, and in love and endurance. I want to emphasize right there on that one part, in love. Do not go up to that person that is speaking false doctrine and start berating them and yelling at them and saying all this slanderous stuff. You bring it in love. I had this one person that I follow on the social media. He was talking about false doctrine. How this person was preaching, and uh, very nicely called it to the carpet. Very nicely, very eloquent. Do we understand that people were very angry with that person for calling it out? That's, that's the problem, is people are following the false doctrine so much that they are being misled. And following false idols and worshiping false gods. We need to be in the word. Romans 15, 4. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through encouragement of scripture, we might have hope. <clears throat> 2 Timothy 2, uh, 15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed Rightly handling the word of truth. <clears throat> David, can you come up here and play, please? We're going we're gonna to close down a little bit. Take another spot. Take it from another spot. 
someone said something to you that pricked you different, or you're doing something at home, work, or outside, and you get that weird feeling, that feeling like you shouldn't be doing it, as you're scrolling through your phone, you start seeing these ads pop up, or these pictures pop up. You start getting in your head, well, this, nobody's looking. Nobody's behind me. Maybe if I turn down the brightness on my screen, that way anybody that comes by won't be able to see it. church hurt by the message but the other person right next to them can sit there and say that was the greatest message I've ever heard we receive the message different and honestly it's how we receive that message are you going to take that message as wow I got to change and I probably should change from the inside out, or is it going to be, well, geez, I don't like that, so mm -hmm. gives me an excuse to go to the bar. That weird feeling, you feeling like you're singled out, is the Holy Spirit speaking to you and showing you what is right and what's wrong, what is good, and what needs to be changed. And I love it. You can continue to go I love it when the people come into church and they listen to the pastor preach and they sit there and say, Oh, I heard this message before. You get up and walk out. Well, obviously, you have not heard that message before. Because if you heard that message before, it would have changed from that way. And you probably would have received it differently. Let's not follow the false doctrine of this world. Allow us to gain that stuff that's on the very bottom. That sweet, yummy goodness. I mean, want to drink. special is. I don't know what song he's got cleaned out. But I'm willing to believe that this song that he's going to play is probably exactly on point for what we need to hear. Because when God moves 
mysterious ways. It's funny how everything ties in together. Well, at least can you very easily Francis was a very remarkable fellow, among other things. He was famous for having said, preach the gospel at all times, using words when necessary. Very nice, Michael. Thank you. 
<laughs> I mean, David, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My brain is so mushy. I don't, I don't play piano. David <laughs> plays piano very well. <laughs> Thank you, David. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say um, what you said was very accurate. Uh, I've done a lot of ministry in many churches and you know, in different ministries over the years. I'm one of those guys who's kind of a little bit of a stickler for getting things right and doing things the right way. So when I see people preaching things that are way out in left field, either the Lord says, Mike, don't do it, because they're not ready for what you're about to say, <laughs> or he says, it's okay to correct them. Um, there's at least one church out there, maybe two, that think I'm a false prophet just because I told them what was in the Bible. Even though I didn't prophesy anything. And the reason I bring that up is if you do what the pastor, you know, the Lord led the pastor, you know, to tell you to do today, you have to be prepared for that because Jesus had that happen to him. The Pharisees said he was he had a demon. I have people say that about me. Just because I was telling them, no, the Bible actually says this. Now, that's not a joke. It's it's bizarre. What's in the world today? Mm -hmm. But you have to be ready. But you're gonna, you know, every time you you stand up for the gospel, you you are being like Christ. Jesus was standing up for the Bible, for the Old Testament, and his the prophecies about him in it. When he told everybody who he was, mm -hmm. he was standing up for the Bible itself and God's word, and the prophecies being fulfilled in his life. And when we stand up for God's word, we're we're being like him. For him, not for ourselves, but for him. And you have to expect the same reaction from the world sometimes. That, and, and you just have to let it roll off your, you know, your back, you know, like the duck's you know, back, the, like a ring off a duck's back, if I said that right. <laughs> uh, you have to let it roll off, yeah. You just do. And say, God, you know, take care of these people, send other people to minister to them, tell them the truth, and move on to whatever he has for you. Mm -hmm. Praise Jesus. Uh, Jesus <clears throat> we can ask Jesus for help in feeding the Lord's sheep those sheep who truly love the Lord will respond in John 21 15 it says so when they had dined Jesus said, or said to Simon Peter Simon son of Jonas do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know I love thee. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? He said unto him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him a third time, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Do you love me? And he said unto him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Just after the resurrection, Jesus appeared and had a meal with the disciples. At the conclusion of the meal, he asked Peter a question in three different ways. In verse 15, Jesus asked Peter if he loved him. Agape was the word that is the uh, Hebrew word used. More than he loved the other disciples. In verse 16, he asked if he loved him with agape type of love, the God kind of love. And in verse uh, 17, he asked if he loved him with phileo, which is a brotherly type of love. In response to each of these questions, True to his nature, Peter responded with a resounding yes, and in response to Peter's answers, the Lord commanded him to feed his sheep. Three times Peter was told to feed his sheep. The Bible records that Peter did indeed fulfill the commandment of the Lord to feed his sheep. In fact, history records that he spent his life, and in the end laid down his life doing just that. Like Peter, Christ calls upon you and I to feed his sheep. This church exists for that very purpose. Each week, the gospel is preached and the message goes forth 
of Christ's love and grace that is extended to all men and women. The feeding of his sheep is not without cost, however. It takes sacrifice, commitment, and dedication. And this church needs people, just like Peter, who will answer the call to feed the Lord's sheep. It is not without cost, and only those who truly love the Lord will take part. Do you love the Lord today? Feed his sheep. We give our tithes and offerings today to continue the ministry of our church. Like Peter, because of our love for the Lord, we are giving, and our giving nature makes possible the feeding of the Lord's sheep. David, could you please pray over the tithes and offerings? Thank you, Lord. Please accept these, this offering as, a, as an expression of our gratitude to you, Lord Jesus. We pray for the proper, proper use of these funds. We pray for cheerful hearts to, to yield uh, the, the substance that is yours to begin with, Lord. We pray for a blessing and a bounty, bounty, bounty is fruition in Jesus' name. Amen. A few announcements uh, before we go. Uh, so tomorrow night, uh, we're going to have our prayer and worship meeting, like we usually do. Um, and so it's going to start at 6 o'clock. It usually goes about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, you can come and go during that time, however you like. Uh, we, have, we usually have a good time. Last time we had uh, the, another church, Crossroad. Um, no, or, is it Cross Point or Cross, Cross Point? They, yeah, they came by and... Did it with us, and we had a wonderful time. We put up a prayer requests uh, on a board, and so people can take them home and with them. Um, and usually, they take a picture with their phone these days. Uh, but you can also write them down and, and pray throughout the week for other people's needs. And we pray for the church and the community up here. Uh, and uh, so that's tomorrow night. Uh, we have um, the mass ordinance meeting uh, for the. Uh, city of Lebanon is going to be happening on March 23rd. So they're going to decide if they're going to continue doing mass you know, uh, ordinance in the city uh, or not. Um, obviously, a lot of people are just kind of ignoring it now, <laughs> but you might have seen that. Uh, we noticed it this morning. Uh, but, you know, uh, please pray for them and you know, anything else that might happen at that meeting um, because it's a touchy subject. Uh, and we want there to be peace and God to be among them as they make their decisions and give them wisdom. Um, and let's see here, Cross Point, the church that joined us, they have a, they're opening up a, a coffee house uh, evening. So they have, they built a little coffee shop. Their church is um, just uh, on the top of the hill next to the uh, golf course in Lebanon. Yeah. Uh, this is the Carter Golf Course, I think it's what it's called. Uh, so if you want to go there, it's fri Friday night, they're going to start it. Uh, it's going to be at 6 p.m. on Friday. And they're going to have people playing music, Christians coming to play music and doing coffee and just having a good time. I might actually go to that. Uh, and uh, Bible study, uh, we're going to do it next week. I apologize personally for not being here this past week. I had some self-inflicted car trouble. <laughs> that was an accident. Uh, not a car accident, but something else I did to my car that's too embarrassing to talk about. My accident. Uh, and I'll talk to you privately about it later if you want to know. Uh, but I did something really dumb and didn't really realize what I was doing and had to pay a lot of money to get it fixed. Um, so yeah, but God was there. It was okay. Other things happened. Um, and uh, we the craft fair, um, that was going to be on April 2nd. We're still looking for vendors, so that we're probably going to be pushing it back. So if you know anybody that might want to sell any homemade crafts or other things, uh, or has a business that wants to advertise or bring some stuff in, you know, please invite them. That includes everybody at home. Um, if you've do, been doing stuff during the um, pandemic at home and making things at home and that you were thinking about selling online or something like that, please get in touch with us. Uh, call the church uh, or get in touch with Sierra or on the website at uh, Abundant Life um, and uh, dot, uh, Lebanon, New Hampshire dot, you know, at uh, dot Faith or you can go to the, web, uh, the Facebook page and just leave a message there for Sierra and she'll get back in touch with you. Um, and so uh, keep that in prayer as well. That's the next event that we want to do here. So keep that in prayer. And, um, and that's all So uh, for the announcements. Thank you all for joining us today. And God bless you all. And uh, have a wonderful week. We'll be praying for you.